my life? Where's my beautiful home? Where's the life? Where's the life I've known? Oh, I'm a big man now with big problems. Had to sell my house, take all my things off to Florida. Off to Florida. It's where all those nuts roll off. Oh, oh, yeah, if you lost your soy and flour The only snow goes up your nose and flour My old man calls me up somewhere in Florida He said, son, things aren't so sunny down here Oh, they took my car and all my things. I even sold your mom's old ring here in Florida. Yeah. Down in Florida. It's where all those nuts roll off. Uh, uh, yeah. Crack holes and flaw. The only snow goes up that nose and flaw. Rida. Can't make no money here in Florida. Florida, you suck. It ain't so sunny here in Florida. Florida just sucks And I'm so down bro In Florida Smoking generic smokes in Florida Yeah, I can't afford my coke in Florida All the episode of Cops are taped down in Florida. And Ted Bundy set up shop down in Florida. They had those terrorist flight schools in Florida. Most of your child kidnapping fools, they moved to Florida. Florida, you suck. Florida just sucks. Except if you're redneck alcoholic in your pickup truck. You're gonna hang out with me. We go to Walmart and get our weed for free. And welcome to episode seven, Lucky Seven of Guitar Tales. My name is Dave Cohen. We're thrilled to be here. Uh, this is a wonderful project that has started maybe two and a half, three months ago. Uh, we're going strong. I have to have a list right here because this is how long the list of people lining up to do the show are. In the pre-show warm-up, I think we lined up three more guests. First of all, thanks to Riverview Studios. You know, the last time we talked, I talked about the facilities, and, and hopefully we can show a few of the shots from inside the building. Um, the, the studios are beautiful. We sit on the banks of the Delaware River. I talk about that every time we're on the, on the air. It's gorgeous here, but more importantly than that are the folks who work here. Fantastic, dedicated, talented people behind the cameras, behind the soundboard, um, the director of the show. This is a three camera shoot. It's sophisticated, it's wonderful. If you have any filming needs at all, if you need to tape a commercial, a corporate promotional video, anything, it's fabulous here. Come and take a look. You could tour the facility, but more importantly than the facility, meet the people here. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, this is our Lucky 7 episode. 
we are trucking along so well right now that I need notes to talk about who's lined up. And special thanks to Scott Guitar Assist Engel because everyone on this list is from Scott with my crappy handwriting. All right, we have Dave Crum of Big Bang Baby coming up. We have Randy Ellis, that's not from Scott, that's from Mary, uh, Mary Bradley. Um, Randy Ellis, if you've ever con or come down to a um, board in town, he runs uh, Randy Now's Man Cave. And our guest tonight, Charles Jacobson, is watching tonight. He and I met Randy about a year ago. He's fabulous. He's met all the celebrities. He'll be coming in and talking about guitar players from the vantage point of someone who has booked them. So that should be a really interesting show. We have James McGill of Lifespeed coming in, courtesy of Scott Guitar Assist Engel. And we have Chris Cologne. He's got two things going for him, really three. Um, he's in a band um, that is known as Beatlemania Now. And he's in another band that does all originals. But here's the, the other thing. He's been on HGTV. Uh, his house was featured on HGTV. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. Maybe we'll get some clips in on that. And then in August, um, I've talked about it before, Todd Yasui, executive producer of the Emmy Award nominated Red Table, will be coming in talking about his musical history. He has met everybody um, and has worked with everyone um, in the musical genres. I've flown out to LA and I've seen many uh, wonderful guests on the show when he um, used to executive produce uh, many shows and then he was a producer for The Tonight Show. Another thing to talk about before we get to our guest, this is brand new. We have our new Guitar Tales t-shirt here. Uh, thanks to Mary for that. Absolutely fabulous, but even more important than the front is the back. And here's the back, Riverview Studios. Um, sitting with me is our Lucky 7 guest, um, who is going to be absolutely fantastic. How do I know that? I know that because I listen to him. And he's got a fabulous... Oh, those are the papers I was supposed to keep. But Brian, <laughs> cool, man. Brian Mackey is our guest. I'll welcome you, then I'm going to talk about you a little bit. So we're going to introduce you on camera, but let's get a close-up. This is the first ever wearing by any human being anywhere. You're flexing, aren't you? Yeah, I have to. I mean, You're kind of doing the, uh, the rock kind of thing. Your name just got even bigger. <laughs> That was very well. You're actually succeeding. You're actually pulling it off. I can do it. That's, You're doing that. I'm not good at many things, but that's on the list. Of that's three. working. That's yeah. working. So strangely, I'm underneath your... Uh, yeah. So um, Brian Mackey uh, is fantastic. I know this for uh, a couple of reasons. One, because I uh, did a deep dive onto YouTube uh, watching many of his videos. Um, and two, because as you will see as you started watching the show, he uh, gave us two live performances uh, tonight that were fabulous. Uh, he is a Lakewood um, born and then all over the world performer. Um, he has a single coming out early August? Yes. And what's the name of the single? Uh, Promise Me. Uh, it, he is a classic, wonderful songwriter. I, I loved so many different things that I saw on YouTube. Um, Thank you, man. And, and I, you know, so our second guest, third guest, third guest on the show was Nixon's Head, and I got literally emotional when I listen to one of their songs. Yeah. I listen to your song, Florida, which I know, I know the way our show is formatted, so people have just seen it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank and you, I, man. I, I know that someone can look at that song and say, oh, you're being kind of silly. It's, no, it, it spoke to me. It spoke, wow. there's a dark period. Yeah. And, and, and you were speaking to something that was personal. You was, get, you get it, wow. Oh my God. That's it was, cool, man. No, it was, it was a beautiful song and it was filled with angst and you're mad. And, but in a healthy way, like you nailed it, man. Bad, bad shit went down wow. in your life. Wow! And some people don't get that; they're yeah. thinking it's like a funny thing. Yeah. But you got it, man. No, cool. it was. It, it's a beautiful song. Thank you. And, and so you are. You're our first guest who's your classic sort of Jim Croce styled, you know, uh, guitarist songwriter. I mean, we've had other songwriters, and they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. But that's your thing, and, and you've got. You know, you've played in Nashville. Yeah. You know, you've got that going on. And we'll talk a lot about the fact that you were in Europe. Um, but but the, you're, you're a new genre for us, and I think it's really cool. Oh, it's cool. I'm really glad to be here. It's a great show, and the studio's amazing, and I got oh. the shirt. Oh, I got to hang out with you. you, you and you're the first. <laughs> this is the Lucky 7 show. It's awesome, man. Um, and you brought some friends with you. We'll yeah. talk about your friends in a little bit. But you know, uh, when we start every show, there is a game we play. Yes. And um, my role. I came I prepared. I know you did. 
And the, the nice thing is you know enough to know not to tell me what you know. I'm not going to say anything until right. I'm asked. All right, here. <laughs> I like that. So the, the name of the show is, or the game is Six Degrees of John Bon Jovi. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Jay Vaughn from Kentucky called it Six Degrees of Bon Jovi. That's not correct. There's not enough syllables in it. It's Six <laughs> Degrees of John Bon Jovi. Yes. You have come prepared. We know the game. How do we get you there? Well, I was playing in a little pub in Addison, New Jersey. I know it well. And it was Richie Sports Bar across from the Ford plant. Okay. And uh, there'd be like a lot of... 27 or Route 1? Yeah, uh, right off of 27. Okay. And then there's like a pizzeria there. I, I don't even know if it's there anymore. Well, Joe Loria's music shop is there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I was in there and I was playing for the lunch crowd and, you know, there was maybe like 15 people in there. And... Um, you know, one person was clapping, but really he wasn't. He was just packing the cigarettes, you know? So it was just like... Oh, yeah, let's go back to that. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Yeah, exactly. So he's like, you know, like like doing whatever you... Yeah, because we were laughing. That was the worst pantomime in the history of pantomimes. I literally just did this. Yeah, well... That's pretty bad. All right. It depends on whose company you're in. Yeah. So, okay. I, I mean, I'm thinking that I had no problem with that. Right. So I was thinking that, you know, people were excited, but we were loud, we were obnoxious, we weren't okay. good. Okay, now what, what band were you with? Uh, Restless Drive. It was horrible. It's a good name, though. Yeah. It was okay. Not good. Okay. So we were in there, and, uh, you know, one guy, like I said, wasn't clapping. Yeah. And then here comes David Bryan. So he's there, and I'm playing a piano synthesizer on my guitar because I'm being experimented because I think I'm, like, the guy from Radiohead. All right, now what kind of guitar do you have to do uh, that? It's a Japanese Telecaster. Okay, and then what, do you, what is it going through? Uh, rolling. Okay. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the rolling MIDI system? Yes. I have yeah. it all modified. With that crazy plug totally. with all the little things yep. on it. Yep. I modified it to do that. Well, I didn't, but my bass player did because he's a total pot smoking nerd and just okay. like yeah. never leaves the house, you right. know, answers the door in his underwear, that type of thing. So, who doesn't though? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, for like the pizza guy. So, we were just like, you know, playing and then. David Bryan says to me, he goes, man, you know, that's a really convincing piano sound. He goes, he couldn't believe how it tracked. Right, you know right. You know what I mean? And yeah, I met him. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So you go from him, he's pro as we joke, he's probably met John. Yeah, I think he met him a time or two. Yeah. So that just brings you from him to Because he's the John. keyboard player. He goes on the tour with him. So here's the question for you. So we had Charles Lorita on the last episode. Yeah. So he met Richie Sambora. Mm -hmm. Whom? Whom? clearly would have met John. Does this make you tied for first place? Well, he's still on tour with him. Ah, so we have a tie. You know what I mean? We really have a tie. So you're one step removed if we play by those rules. I don't think we include you. So you met somebody who's one step removed from John. I did pee in Geraldo uh, Rivera's fountain, and he was living next door to John at the time. Because hmm. I was at a party and drunk. Love the story. Yeah. Doesn't take us. It doesn't really advance the ball for yeah. the game, but I do love the story. I didn't pee in his yard, but and it's that would have gotten you there. All right. So now, as I as I said before, sorry, Geraldo. Yeah. I don't like your stash. There is, <laughs> they were well played. There is only one person on the planet Earth who can beat you and who could beat Charles Lorita uh, at six degrees of John Bon Jovi, and you know who you are. You are about forty miles away in Rumson, probably right now. You go right down one ninety five. And we could chat. So I'm He'll be on the show soon, I think. I hope so. Because you said it, if for no other reason. Strange things have happened in my life. I'm like a Forrest Gump type guy. I like that. All right. Now, I, I want to chat about you. Um, sure. You've got two beautiful guitars with you. So our rule here, which is actually a non-rule, just pick them up anytime you want sure. to chat. You could do it now. You could do it later. We're not, we're not amping up because... Mm. You know, you've got a Takamini here, which is wonderful. I got to test drive them beforehand. They're wonderful. You like the neck on that one, right? I love the neck on that. Yeah. But, but your, your Martin is a nice loud guitar. So anytime you want, just pick them up as we're chatting. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about your musical journey because, you know, we're having fun here. We're being light, you know, kind of little quips here and there. Yeah. But your songs are really coming from deeply emotional, personal places. They are. Let's talk about Florida. Yeah, Florida was a song I wrote for my dad. Um, for your dad or about your dad? For my dad, because okay. he was going through a hard time in his life. He uprooted us, and um, I think my boat's here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he uprooted us, and we went down to Florida, and we, we were just really poor. Okay. You know, we were just lived on a farm. And Your parents, are they divorced? 
My father passed away a couple years ago. Okay, I'm sorry. But I reconciled with him before he passed. And okay. It was just really a, a hard time for us, and we just lived in a town that was like maybe 30 people. Wow. Yeah, really small. It was almost, you're, you're almost in, like a commune. I think you told me in the beginning, I don't think we were on the air, you were in the, in the Panhandle area? Yeah, Havana. I, okay. Not many people were always like, oh, that's Cuba, right? And I'm like, no, it's worse. It's the Redneck Riviera, as they Florida. call it. Yeah. And it's beautiful, though, right? They have the beautiful sand beaches. They, yeah, down to Panama City. We lived in the woods. We had really? gators that were in our yard when the river overflowed and rattlesnakes oh. and all that stuff. Right, so then you're, you're dealing with... You don't get the ocean breezes. You're just getting the hot, sticky weather. Alligator farts, man. There was nothing cold. There was nothing breezy. So this was a hard existence for you. It was pretty rough, yeah. And it was just really like, you know, isolationist. So what's interesting is that you're doing something I do. You've got these deep emotions that you're dealing with, and you try to use wit, almost like a cover, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I do that too. And so this song, and what I like about it, I notice when you sing you kind of look up. And I think you're taking yourself to the emotional place that you were in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And, and that song, you, you know, there, there, there's honest, organic anger that I heard in that song. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good way to, to channel uh, yeah. emotions, you know? I mean, so. I've been to a lot of psychiatrists and stuff, and, you know, to try to deal with past stuff. But I bet the art, the music, your expression, does that help as much as that helps or no? Sometimes more. Right. You know, I mean, one psychiatrist I went to, we ended up talking about his car the whole time on how to fix his battery or something because he didn't think there was anything wrong with me. And maybe there isn't. Yeah. You know, like maybe you found the right outlet. Or maybe like, he was just bad because there's obviously something wrong. With that could be another answer, right? Yeah. Right, maybe he was just a shitty psychiatrist. Yeah, there's something wrong with me, definitely. Right. But right. no, I mean... You go through stages, right? right? I think everybody does. Uh, it's a process, I think. Uh, you know, you, you have your, your ebb and flow, you know, like you're doing well, you feel okay, you don't really need people as much as you used to. And then you get these, I do, I get these moments where I need. Right, just a little something. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question. So, like, if I were to look at the arc of, let's, let's talk about some 60, 70-year-old people who are, who are our heroes, yeah. right, musically speaking. Um, I don't know, I'll, I always like to talk about Pete Townsend. Has he written anything good, that, at least that we know about, since the mid-80s? No. I don't think so. No. So do you think that there has to be some kind of tumult in your life or in your heart? Maybe not even objectively, mm -hmm. but something in your heart that, that to, to create the art that's at least going to be sort of yeah. relatable and yeah. meaningful. I, I think that's a good question. I think uh, there has to be... You know, I mean, you can make a rainbow with a with a garden hose if you hold it in the sun, right? Yeah, you but it's not mean? a real. But the most yeah. organic rainbows come right. from the storm. The storm. Oh, that's right? a, I love that metaphor. That's pretty cool. Wow. So like, so you like, so this Florida song, it, it you really took like a deeply personal, yeah, bad time in your life, and there's that anger. You know, it's almost like fuck you, Florida. Yeah. And. and now, when you play, you, I know from before the show, you said you've played in Florida. And, and I, I would imagine, if I were in Florida, I would get the song. If I were, if I were in Florida, as a Florida resident, I would say, I get, I get it. Yeah. He doesn't really care the, about the state. No, it's not the people, really. It, it, it's, not, it's not the people. It's not, it's not the geographic. Well, it's some of the people. But what I'm saying is, like, yeah. there seems to be, like, Florida is almost like this state where pirates go to. Right. You know what I mean? It's like they couldn't make it somewhere else, so I'm sorry I'm well, saying well, no, it's like you've got... But um, they all go there with problems. Key, Key West and Cape May. Exactly. Did yeah. you ever really walk around Cape May or Key West? Both. Right? Yeah. They're, they're literally pirates went to both. Yeah. And, 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 if, and New Jersey is, a, is sort of a microcosm yeah. of, of the country because if you look at the geography of Cape May, it sort of shoots down. It's below the Mason-Dixon It's almost line. like a mini Florida. It's yeah. a panhandle right, right there. Right, Cape right. May County, all that. Right, right. And, and it goes down and it's surrounded by water sort of on both sides. And then the Keys, pirates literally went there. They, they literally went there. Yeah. So, right, so Florida, you know, People, when they, people think of Florida, if you think of Miami, it culturally has nothing to do with where you grew up. No, no. Where I grew up was kind of devoid of anything cultural. It was kind of like the opposite of culture. Right. And then strangely, it gave you inspiration to write meaningful music. Strange, right? Yeah. How sometimes in the darkness we develop the best pictures, I think. I mean, we just... 
There's another good metaphor. I like wow, that. Oh my God, I better stop. Yeah. No, I think it's, I think sometimes we do because we, we have this time to marinate. We have these time to like, sometimes I like to do things. My writing process is like, I don't like to do anything for a while. I just like okay. sit around, watch TV, you know what I mean? And just not think and then pick up my guitar. Right. So like, are there, have there been, who was it? I think it was Dim who was on the show. One of our guests, it was either Dim or Charles, yeah. went two years without writing a single song. And I, I think apologize, I forget which one I think that's guys. totally doable. Right. Yeah, that's because you're not writing, I, well, let me ask instead of I write every day. Okay, you do? I do. I have to, if I don't. I write on the piano a lot. Okay. And the guitar is just more portable. Right, right, right. And, yeah. it, and it's... I heard you say as we were in between breaks, you have a guitar every five feet in your house. I do. Okay. Yeah. So you could always pick up a guitar wherever you are. But so that's interesting. So you, you will try to write, and, and let me ask you this, will you be writing music? Will you be writing lyrics or both every day? Sometimes music, sometimes both. Now, when you write, let's, let's start with lyrics. Might you have like a book of poetry that may or may not be connected to a riff? No. So you're writing them together every time. Usually, yeah. Right, or I let's, dream. Let's, take, let's start with Mr. Ta is it Mr. or Ms. Takamini? Oh, Takamini. Yeah, this would be a, a lady, I think. Okay. Kind of has curves like a lady, I think. She's nice and light. She's yeah. light. Yeah. So, so when you, so you're going to. This is really, I guess, something we haven't talked about before in our show. You're a classic songwriter, so when you're picking up a guitar, if you're, if you're thinking of a riff, you're also thinking of lyrics. If you're thinking of lyrics, you're also thinking of a riff, because at the end of the day, you're saying a song has to come out of this sit down, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, or sometimes from a situation, like I could be on a tour bus and the motor blows, like it did in England. Right. And we had a bunch of like people on board and we were late to our last show in Manchester. Excuse me, and it was just really a tough time. No sound check, just the line check when you get up there. Okay. And I wrote a song right after that because it, it was the stress of it. Right. You know, sometimes I work better when there's stress around. Well, I always talk about, I always come to Townsend. Everything comes back to Townsend for yeah, me, but guitar and pen. Great guitar player. He wrote a song about having trouble writing songs. Really? Yeah. That's, if you ever listen on Who Are You, the album, Who Are You, Guitar and Pen. Oh, okay. He talks about, I don't, know what to, I don't know what to write. Everything's been done before. I'll write about my guitar and my pen. That's right. It, it, and now I'm thinking about the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great song, but that's when he's like, all right, I got nothing here. I got nothing here. I got nothing here. I'll write about the creator process. And that's, it's almost grasping at straws. Yeah. But it kind of it didn't kind of, it worked. But it's great because it's good for a song. I mean, you want something ideally that hasn't been done before. Right. right. And, he, and he wrote about the fact that it's all been done before, yeah. but yet he, it hadn't been done before yeah, in that yeah, way. Yeah. So for you, I, I've never met anyone who always goes in there and say, I'm going to marry my, my words and my music together. So physically speaking, do you have, is it a scrap paper? Is there a, a bound journalish kind of thing? I don't write it down. You don't? I just, I record it on my phone or sometimes if my phone is full, I'll call my answer machine in my house. Oh, I'll really? into it, yeah. Now, do you ever wake up at like three in the morning? All the time. Really? Yeah. So, and then, now here, here's a, one of the things I wanted to ask you going into today. So, th there's only, short of having incredibly challenging, unreachable chord progressions, right? There's only so many, so yeah. to speak. Or at least some, one might feel there's aren't only so many. How do you contend with that to keep it fresh? Both songs I heard from you today and everything I heard on my little YouTube journey, it was all fresh. But how do you approach the guitar? That's a good question. I'm not really a great guitar player, um, but I do come up with stymie chords that stymie people. Well, let's see if... Like, stuff like this. I've heard a few from... They're, they're like looking at them and they're trying to think... Yeah, that's a little dissonant, right? Yeah, they're trying to think yeah. what the pattern is and why you do that. Right. You know what I mean? Um, what else would be another one? Now, the other thing I noticed you do, which I really enjoyed, is you take advantage of space. I love space. Yeah. Space so is important. It is. You'll have really protracted a beat, a beat, a beat. Right now he's going to play again. Yeah. Like I noticed in both songs, and, and you're creating sound without sound. Sometimes, it really, it's so true. It's not what you play, it's what you don't play. Right, right. Right? 
Yeah. And it, there's nothing worse, sorry drummers, that just blow through everything and hit cymbals and can bash where you don't need to. Right. The great drummers, in my opinion, are like Elton John's drummer, Billy Joel's drummer. Billy and, Joel's, I've noticed, I've never no, yeah. If you listen, I can picture him in my head. Yeah. He's you, got the ponytail on yeah. the back, the pulled back hair. Right. Yeah. But from the spatial quality, yeah. like how they gave the the singer space to sing, yeah. is very important. You you make use of that with your singing. You make use of that with your guitar playing. You you take a lot of extended beats mm -hmm. and, and you just and there's this sort of pause and sometimes when you come back on the guitar you're barely touching it i noticed wow you're, you're observant man uh, i yeah this is stuff i do subconsciously but now that you point it out yeah well we talked on one of the shows uh, i'm not much of a guitar player but i noticed the other day when i'm playing my what? thumb is muting a little bit show me uh, and whoop yeah, that's all right for that guitar but it's a tacanini yeah it's, it's only a tacanini <laughs> But I'll wrap my thumb around a little bit if I'm playing a chord, just to mute the E. Yeah, I do that. You're grabby. Yeah. I do that. And the, and the E is muted. I didn't even know I was doing it. Yeah, it's natural inclination. Right, so you're doing, you're making an incredible use. Oh, what is, no, we're not talking about this pick. You know what? I'm going to create a segue right now. Look at that. You are an endorser of picks. And yes. I was about to hand you a horrible pick. We're getting rid of this pick because... Nasty We've, pick. It's a horrible it's pick. It's been really going against my grain the whole time we were talking. Oh, uh, bad, bad karma from that pick. Yeah. This is a Brian Mackey pick, and this is Pick World. Well, because it has my name on it, it cheapens it a bit. But okay. I think it's a quality pick, though. Oh, I, I failed. Wait, here's the camera. Here we go. So it, am I right? It's Pick World? Pick World, and I believe they're out of Delaware. Yeah, I tried it. It's a fabulous pick. It's got nice marbling here. It's well can, made. Yeah, it really was. It was very nice. Um, and you are an official endorser. I of am. Pick World. Pick World. Everybody. Based in Delaware. I Delaware. Think we talked about. Yep. Okay. Probably that smoke you see going over the bridge. They're burning picks. That's probably what it is. They're burning the bad picks. Yeah. Right. But to come back to this, you're you're creating these beautiful spaces, and we both did the same thing. We got silly when we were talking about something serious. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, but you create. Oh, there you go. But you create. Keep it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But you create space both on the guitar and in your vocals, and it's very calculated in a, in a really nice way. I noticed Thank that. You, man. And when you will have a moment of pause, I notice you're not coming back and, and slamming your guitar necessarily. Mm -mm. You're coming back and you're just giving you, it a little nuance. Yeah. But that's really cool. And and, and to come back to my original question, you know, A E E D. You know. Whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. So how are you? Well, capo. Okay. Capo's a big saver. Like, uh, I saw you brought one, right? Yeah, you can get a million different things. Like, I could play this progression, right? Let's see. I could go. Right, and then if I come down, like, say here, right? Okay. It's like... And it, yeah, it's an extra finger, really. It's an extra four finger. Right. You know what I mean? It just brightens it up. Right. Not as somber. And really, it's great for a guy that really can't play. I mean, it's like... I mean, you play well. You play well. I play okay. I'm adequate. But I come up with stuff that... I, I don't really try to be different, but I guess in a way I do. Well, if you're doing like the dissonant chords here and there, if you, I saw you were doing some two... You know, you're just hitting... Double octaves. That's it. Right. Yep. Right. And it's creating interest. We talked a lot, I think with Steve Bellow, about The Edge. Yeah. And, and no, I take that back. Charles Lorena and I were talking about it. I forget. Yeah. But, you know, half his songs are two chords. I know. And then the Bono, I thought about you also coming in. So your responsibility is similar to Bono's in that he's creating these wonderful melodies that sort of wrap their way around right. two or three chord songs. That's and, interesting, yeah. And I'm not saying that your songs are necessarily two or three chords. No. But you're not, you're not going into some crazy pyrotechnics on guitar. Not going crazy. Right. So you're creating... Less to think about. Right. And you're creating sort of musical progressions that are supportable. Yes. And, and, and they allow you to vocally... That's so true, man. That's, that's a great, great analysis of it. Because... Uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, like... Thank you, man. Yeah, it, it, it's good stuff. So you're in your songwriting process... Mm. You're going to go in there, you're going to think of some lyrics. And now, do you ever have times when you're happy? Let's say you wake up, you're happy, you've had a good cup of coffee in the morning, your personal life is good. Yeah. Like, what the fuck do I write about now? Well, 
And there, why? Why do you have to write every day? All right. Well, there was a guy. He was painting the house next door, and, it, and it's 6:30 a.m. And he has like a rock station on, and he's okay. doing ACDC. Okay. And it's like, I love ACDC. It's cool. But at 6:30 in the morning, I felt like taking the radio out with my BB gun. Right. You know right. what I mean? I just was like, dude. Are 6:30. You, right. Yeah. It's like Mr. Connor across the street's been up with a cough, and he's like 70. I'm like, is there really a Mr. Connor? Yeah, I'm like, show us who So you just dissed Mr. Connor on our show? No, no, I was, I was sticking up for him. Oh, Mr. Okay. Connor's 70. You should be... Di- so you're supporting Mr. Yeah, Connor. Yeah, I don't want to hear Thunderstruck, dude, at 6.30. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I love it. Yeah. By the way, Rabbit Trail, I just found an acoustic version... Of Thunderstruck? Of Thunderstruck on YouTube. Play it. Do you know the chords? <laughs> Nor would I try. <laughs> No, I couldn't even go near that. It, it had a guy on, I think he might have had a washboard. Nah, it, nah, it was nah. it was like a bluegrass group. That's awesome. Pure acoustic. So that's brown grass. If you're going to do that, that's brown that, grass. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. Yeah, it's a dirt, little dirtier. It had a banjo, acoustic guitar, and they nailed You know what? I'm going to put it. I will put this on guitar. Tell I want to see it. It's that good. It's on my um, Uzi app. Awesome. So it's fantastic. I'm going to check it out. It's it's that good. Dude, I'll, I'll, cool. I'll post it. I love it, stuff like that. Yeah, it's fantastic. But so you wake, all right, so you wake up at 6.30 yeah, for Mr. Connor. I, I hear Thunderstruck, Mr. Connor's coughing. And How I do you hear Mr. Connor? Because he's louder than Thunderstruck. So maybe they should be protected from Mr. Connor. And that's true, but he is 70, and he wears an ascot. I mean, okay. this guy, you know, he yeah. thinks he's like James Lipton right, from Inside right. the Actor Studio. I, I feel that. bad I for him. I don't know. I know what Yeah, like, it's right. like he stares right. at me like he's staring into the camera. Yeah. It's like... I don't know what to do, but I went back and I wrote a little song on the piano about that. All right, can you do it on guitar? Um, Is that, or am I asking something that's not doable? Let me try. Oh, oh you got it there, right. Wrong key. That was a key change, it was, it was emotional. Whoop, cup, coffee's on the table. On there too. Mr. Connor's coffin, and the painter will be too. Yeah, I just, that's a great song. Yeah, and I was trying with the melody, and it's better on piano. But I'm just. Now, is that an official? Like, did you finish it? It's a yeah, done? it's done. But I don't want to do it here. It's kind of, it's bad. It, See, it, not every song's good. That that was, but it was catchy and it was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. But he was coughing, and I felt really bad. Does for him. he know about this song? No, he does now. He'll watch it on. Because God knows, Mr. Connor is going to be watching this. He does. He watch. He follows me on Facebook, and my manager's shaking her head because she knows the story to be true. Yeah. Yeah. He. Um, she needs a shout out. Give her a shout out. Beth Slocum, my manager extraordinaire. She babysitter puts up with me. Um. But yeah, he. Uh, Follows me on Facebook. I do the Stage It thing. It's like a worldwide internet thing on the computer. The and World Wide Web? Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that crazy thing. Yeah, I've heard of it. And um, he was like, oh, I had a hard time tuning in like that. And I was like, tuning oh. Tuning in. Yeah. And I was like, then oh. you know you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, you have to dial it up, Mr. Connor. You got to make sure you fine tune it next time. Oh, that's fine. I got to get him a ticket. But so he truly doesn't know that there's a song written about him. No, not yet, because I didn't formally like play it for him. But have I you recorded it anywhere yet, or have you performed it out? No, no. I just this is just this morning. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let me let me come back to this. So every day that you feel this compulsion. So I want to know where did it come from that you need to write a is, do you write a song every day or was, just write it was every either day? that or i go over there and confront them about playing the music no, forget that forget that yeah so every day of your life you're going to write a song or at least work on a song i try to why i don't know it's either that or i do something stupid so maybe that's why yeah like that's in other cool. words it's like my son plays sports so at least he's not you know doing something bad right? yeah absolutely right. that's kind but of do like you think that's part of it it could be, yeah, because my initial compulsion was to go over there and just be like, hey, asshole, you know, like, look what you're doing. Right. You know what I mean? And your, and your speakers pointed right at my window. Right, right. You know what I mean? But what if it's like a mellow morning? Everything's fine. You've had, so I said coffee, you immediately thought of Mr. Connor, you thought of Thunderstruck. Yeah. And you, you get this vibe. What if it's a, a peaceful morning? What, two, three days ago. How was your morning three days ago? Three days ago. Um, or were you, 
Or maybe let's forget about your dementia. I don't think two I, days ago. Two I don't days think ago. I was really too pissed off at anybody that day. All right, so. three days ago. So did you did you write that morning? Yeah, I wrote. Um, I worked on like I do these classical pieces for like TV and film. Right. Like, for Lifetime. Yeah, that that's yeah. All right. Like I do soundtrack yeah. stuff. So like I was doing something like that. All right. So not every bit of writing is. To use a real, you know, people might get a spec house, right? Yeah. Right. So not every song like is Like Carmela Soprano. Remember yeah. that episode? She I had a do. spec house. Yeah, and everything went sour because of the builder and Tony. Remember you that? Know, I do. So, so you, you're not always writing a spec song. You're working on real... Yes. Not that it's not real, but... All right, so this is a... That was a nice organic segue. I want to talk a little bit about how three-dimensional your career is. Yeah. All right, I want to save for a minute. I know that you've toured Europe and you've been all over the world touring. So what is, how did you get involved with scoring uh, for TV? And I think film also, right? Yeah, it's weird. Like I was, uh, I was a carpenter and I was building a mikvah, which is like a, um, a Hasidic thing for um, religious baths. Right. So I was building. You are from Lakewood. Yeah. So I was building right. the mikvahs for them, and I was on the job. I was running late, and I also submitted a song a week before that to a company that pitched a song to Disney, and I was really broke, and um, I got word a text that my song got accepted, and um, I took my girlfriend out to dinner that night because she always paid, you know, and it's like I had money finally. Oh my God! Yeah. That's um. There's a song that I'm thinking. Oh, Bruce Springsteen, really? Rosalita. Really? Yeah. Uh, Rosalita, come. The record company just gave me a big advance. Oh yeah, this wasn't around. big though. But but it's conceptually similar. Wow, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So so you've. How did you feel? I felt good. Right. I felt really good, and I felt like it was validation. You know right. what I mean? And then after that, I started. Um, gaining more uh, exposure to catalogs, music catalogs. Human. So what is all? So these, this is terminology I'm not familiar with. Yeah, like okay, so there's like uh, Travel Channel. They have their own catalog or their own licensing company they use. So I guess what you're talking about. Um, so if I'm going to not mindlessly, but mindlessly watch Travel Channel, right? Yeah. I'm going to think about the show. I'll think about the content. What I'm not thinking about, but what is impacting upon my experience is the music in the background. Yeah, I mean, right. it definitely definitely lends itself to emotional. Right. Yeah. So you're scoring platforms that I might, you know, someone like me, and I'm, I play a little guitar, I don't even think about that, but there are things that I'm yeah. watching every day that get scored. Yeah. And they need people to score them. It's a whole other world, man. Wow. So how did you get connected with that world? Because um, I'll cut you off, but so here you're playing guitar, you're writing songs, you're playing with shitty bands in Edison. Yeah. And then suddenly, really, really shitty bands. But you you moved quite far from there. So. Oh, I mean, I wasn't good either. All right, and that's yeah. right. But what what was it? What was the sort of the networking, the business connection that took you from doing that to oh, yeah. scoring? Yeah. So I made some friends in Nashville. Well. Let's get you to Nashville. Yeah, that's... How do you get from Edison to Nashville? Yeah, so it's funny. Like, I played a song in Red Bank, the one that got licensed, and... Uh, we could do four hours now. Now I want to stop you here. What song got licensed, and it's, how did that happen? It's called Paint It Red, and... All right. It was like uh, somebody in the audience was listening. Okay. And they worked for a licensing company and was like, wow, I like that song. And I was like... Give us a few You want to play it? Of course. Loving you Yeah, I'm good at that Loving you Isn't just an act But there is pain that red Let me be the last face that's a great song. Yeah, so it was that, and then there's some more to it, but they heard it, and after that, they stuck around and was like, wow, do you have an agent? You know, like, what are you doing? And there's three people here. Did you have an them. agent? No. So now, what, what was the context? Were you in a band? Was it you solo on guitar? I was done with bands. I was done with 
Like, Did you migrate from rock to being more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm like a huge like Metallica fan, and like I like hard music. Right. And that's what I play when I'm at home, and I aim it towards the window. I was gonna do that when they were doing the ACDC, but it was right. Mr. Connor. Yeah. Right. So. I, w I like that kind of music, but I don't really perform that kind of music because it's not something that speaks to me. On a personal level. Yeah, like letting right. it off my chest. I wouldn't write, I wouldn't sing that. No. I can't stand Metallica. No, I, I, no, yeah. I don't like them at all. And I think they're great. I just, I like the I guitar personally, players. Like they're great. Band. I just, yeah. can't, I just don't like them. Yeah. But they're great. Yeah. It's like Bob Dylan. He's great. And I don't like them. Lid Wong. Yeah. Yeah. It's Bob Dylan is just, he's amazing. Like if you really, you know, I wrote a song that was inspired by Dylan. Okay. It was like. Well, I stepped out on the road. There was a cold wind on me. That is Bob Dylan. You know? And yeah. I, was like, I, I wrote that after I watched a special on PBS. Well, what, what's the song that Guns N' Roses covered from him? Oh, that was uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door. My law school band. Yeah. Did a rocked out version of Knocking on Heaven's Door about a year before Guns N' Roses did. Isn't that something, man? And you had The Cure before The Cure. We did. We, Scott and I were in a band called The Cure before The Cure existed. And Trenton bass Tim Boney played an amazing lead. Wow. The same thing that Slash did before he did. Seriously? Yeah, somewhere there's a tape of it. I, I, I wasn't good enough, so I had to play bass on it. Not that bass isn't good, but I did a very basic bass. Bass holds line. it down, man. What does that mean? Holds it down with the drummer. Yeah, you're, not, you're with, just... not with me on bass, but no. yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was just like, all right, Dave, you can't do this. Just do your best over there. Um, so you, all right. So shockingly, I haven't lost track of our, our narrative here. Yeah. Um, so, so you're, you're, you're spotted in Red Bank. Yeah. Where were you in Red Bank? Count Basie or? No, it was a small or? internet cafe. Okay. And all I right. was there, and. So I... that you get spotted. They, they, the guy, the guy or the woman stays afterwards and says, "Hey, I like that song." Yeah, and then I go in his car, and yeah, I know it sounds weird. I go in his car after that, and he's putting. You woke up like three days later. Yeah, with my pants. Your or, your organs were cut out. And, yeah. yeah, so there was like a CD player, so he put a CD in of stuff that he licensed, and he goes, "I can make your song sound like this." You know, oh, he, in other words, saying I have access to good studios, yeah, good so studio he, musicians. Yeah, so he flew me down to Nashville, and then. Wow! Yeah. So this is this is incredible. Yeah. So you go from wherever you were at, and I, I don't want to demean where you were at. Then you were good enough to be playing in, yeah. in a cafe and, and creating beautiful music and meaningful music. But this is this is huge. It's weird. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's like a Forrest Gump moment. Right. That's you know, what I'm saying. It's thinking. like I have a lot of those. So, so someone thought enough of you to say, I'm going to spend five hundred dollars on a plane ticket. I'm going to put you up in a hotel for a while. I'm going to take you to our nice studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any were you at any famous studios or? Yeah, actually, you know the band Switchfoot. No. Um, Amy Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the studio that they recorded. Oh at. wow. Yeah. What's the super famous one in Nash Nashville that we've all heard of? Uh, well, there's Ronnie's place. There's uh. I record it there. That Ronnie really? Millsaps plays. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of them. I'm actually going down to write with Jeff King, who's Reva McIntyre's guitar player. Really? I'm doing a show at the Bluebird on the 11th of August. And that 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 is an iconic place. Yeah. We we talked about um, Scott has played at the Stone Pony, which is iconic East Coast. Yeah. But Bluebird. I mean that's that's a big deal. That's a. It's that's weird. That's like Grand Old Opry level, right? It's, yeah. It's a weird. It's a weird. Uh, place to play because like that show Nashville right it's on there and I had no idea because I don't watch Nashville right but one time I was playing there a bus pulled up and this is like five o'clock at night and I'm doing sound check and they let all these people off and they're waiting in the hot sun okay and I'm like man they're here to see me and they're like nobody that's from the show Nashville wow. oh my god cool you know it was so, like first time so you like, connected and, I, and I've listened to a lot of um you ever listen to volume on Sirius, yeah, great station. Yeah. They'll get the. It, it's a whole different vibe when yeah. it, songwriting for folks who either affiliate with or live in Nashville. It's not like you know you'll you'll hear a Steven Tyler interview and he'll say, well, you know, I was out and about and in ten minutes I wrote this song, and you talk to the Na and it's great, you know. Yeah. But then you talk to the Nashville people like, well, I have a catalog of 857 songs Absolutely. and I work, you know, I collaborate with these 72 songwriters and every single day we write we. Have, it's everything about Nashville is about songwriting. Yes, and it's a songwriter's um, town. Right. So, and that sounds like a, 
a competitive but also nurturing environment at the same time. It really is. I mean, I went fishing in, I don't know, Bigger Rich's Pond or something. It like was, from Big and Rich? Yeah, and it was like yeah. 2 o'clock in the morning and we were drunk. With them? No, they were sleeping. And but they, you were somehow, why were you there? What brought you there? The people that I recorded with were friends with them. Okay. And we decided to go fishing after drinking. And it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. And I think I lost my shoes. And then, or they got thrown in the water. And then all of a sudden we We saw, know they got thrown in the water, by the way. probably did. So yeah. then we saw the lights come on. And That's I, the way you addressed the camera after I said, like, yeah, they've got me on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think you did. Yeah. So we saw the back porch lights go on, and it was like 500 yards away. It was a really big yard, right? Right. And he goes, man, you want to keep it down out there? My baby's trying to sleep. And, and, then, we, and then the lights came off. He didn't tell us to leave. He just told us to keep it down. It was it one of those guys? Yeah, because I saw, like, this shadow and this mullet shadow. I don't know the mob of that ride a horse. Cowboy, um, yeah. save a horse, ride a cowboy. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was his house. I'm sorry, if, I didn't mean the mullet thing, but I'm pretty sure you were sporting a mullet. And it was just, it was weird. Right. That, but that's a great story. Yeah. So you get connected with this Nashville scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it, it just seems wonderfully crazy to me that you're playing. It's fun. Red Bank, and Red Bank is a musical town. Yeah, yeah. I, I lament the loss of all of our guitar shops because they're all gone. Guitar that's where I bought gone. this. Oh, which one? I think Red Bank was, Music or Guitar Trader? I think it was... Uh, or Jax. Was it Mammoth Music or Red Bank Music? It was Red Bank Music. I think I bought this at Red Bank. Not this one, that one. Okay. I bought this one on the internet. Right, right. You told me that before the World Wide Web. The World Wide Internet, one. as we call yes. it. Yes. Right. Where you could actually... Yeah. But, um, so you get transported from just a nice local Jersey scene. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. It was fun because it... You know, I, I lived with rednecks in, not that Nash people are rednecks, but I lived with rednecks in Florida. So it kind of spoke to me, but in a good way, because right. the food was good. I like that food. Right. Um, you know. No, you got, I mean, I'm a big Memphis fan. Love the, it's my the favorite. barbecue, yeah. Yeah. Um, dry, I like dry over a wet barbecue. Me too, man. Yeah. Definitely. The, yeah. Definitely. Um, so you end up in Nashville. So you must have networked. I did. Why are you looking at, you're looking at Beth. You because, nervous? No, because she she knows some of these stories. Like you're like, All right, don't tell that, don't tell that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just knows some of these stories. Like are like pretty wild. Like um, I don't know. Uh, it was a PG thirteen. All right, right, I'll give you one. Well, this is just a weird story. Like I I was working with a producer and I was at, staying at his house, and he lived in this old church with his father, and his father was like this huge producer, and I was working with the son because. The father was way too expensive to work with, and the son was like, yeah, buddy, I'll give you a deal, and we just became friends, right? Okay. So I go in the, this is like 10 o'clock at night, and I go in the kitchen to get a drink. He's like, go get a beer. So I'm like getting a beer. And then on the refrigerator, like my eyes are going in the focus, and I see Bono on his hearth. Like I look over and see, that's his hearth over there. And then I see Mel Gibson, and it, there's, pointing at a screen that's in the living room and they had a private showing of the pr Passion of the Christ. Oh, my in his house, is right, yeah. In his house and like Bono was hanging out with them and I, I like, can't imagine Bono and Mel Gibson in the same room. It was actually a separate time and then okay. yeah, right? Yeah. And then it was just really weird because I'm like pointing at it and he goes, "Yeah, that's that's them." And then it's just very matter of fact, you know. Right. Down so in Nashville, it's just so this is surreal for you, I would think. Yeah. Now, when did it be? When and how did it become normal? Um, or if it did? Yeah, it's well, it's kind. Of, no, I mean, there's always like moments like they they up the ante, like when you meet certain people. But I think what I've learned to realize is that we're all just broken people in a lot of ways like if you're writing good music you by definition you <laughs> arguably are yeah there's just like people that you think really have their shit together right right are the ones that really really don't that's why they write their good music yeah you know like i'll even like elton john is yeah. wonderful but i think he's happy now i don't oh yeah i don't know that he wrote, he's written anything good in 30 years no but he's yeah. really he's one of my favorites me too but i think once on some level once you become happy I think it negatively impacts upon your art. Yeah. You know, I mean, it doesn't kill it and you could do other things. I mean, you hear all these, you know, whether it's an act or, well, that sounded pretentious, an actor, right? An actor, uh, I'm James Lipton now. <laughs> but, um, but if you're an actor, you're a musician, you're an artist, 
you know, they'll, they'll just sort of retreat. It's like, I like to paint now. Yeah. yeah. Paint. Yeah. You know, but I think what happens is that when people truly are, are happy and they're content and their life gets into a good place, the, the, the stronger works that they're going to create won't come out anymore. And that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's good. So let's hope you stay unhappy for a well, long time. Well, that's funny because I went to my doctor. I went to the general practitioner and I asked him, you know, for an antidepressant. Right. And he was like, uh, oh, why do you want to do that? You're a songwriter. <laughs> Like, That's pretty funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, because uh, I'm suffering, you know. And he's right. Like, but I'm better now, I think. But but there's, like you said, a uh, half hour ago, there's, there's ups and there's downs. Yeah. So when so you're writing every day. So I misunderstood the process when I first asked you the question. Okay. So I want to come back to it a sure. little bit. So are you writing, to use our little term we came up with today, spec songs every day? Or is it more like... The spec song is going to be written when something occurs in your life that inspires it. Um, well, I try to be the most authentic first. Okay. And then if there's something that needs to be tracked for something else, I kind of do that after. So that makes sense. So yeah. like, you know, like I'm a lawyer and I might think of creative marketing for my law firm, yeah. but then there's always other, th there are things to do that need my attention. So, you're, so you always have projects yeah. Um, whether it's scoring or something else yeah. that need your time. So every day you're working, mm -hmm. uh, but not every day are you creating something where nothing previously existed in that realm. Exactly. Okay. Like, there's right. some strong pro bono work that I do. Which is? Like, just, like, uh, I don't know if I can say it on here. It's, I got accepted into that um, uh, Musicians on Call. Okay. You know what that is? No. Where the musicians go into the hospitals for oh, the cancer fantastic. kids. And, you know, like. It's a process, though. You have to be bad at it, and I think I made it through a couple rounds, believe it or not. But that's beautiful. Yeah, and it's like, I like that stuff, you know? Now, when you go in there, are you creating music for that, or you'll take stuff out of your catalog? No, no, like, they give you an approved list. Oh, really? Because it can't be anything really depressing. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I just don't want to do that to them. Right, so you're going to, right, you, so it's either your cover. I never do covers, but for that, I will. Right, yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah. All right, now... I want to segue a little bit here. So not only do you get pulled into Nashville, not only do you start networking, people are like, oh, this guy can write. He has good talent. And by the way, I really mean this. You have a great voice. Thank you. I mean, I mean that. You, you network, and the next thing you know, and I don't know if I'm getting the sequence right, you're going from Red Bank to Europe. Yeah. How, well, does, how does that happen? Well, Europe was a progression. Um, I wrote this song, Are You Listening? I don't know if you heard that one. Look at your eyes, they're exactly the same as last time. Your arms, they're wrapped around me so tight. Are you listening? Are you listening? So I did that one. And wh when and where did you write that? Were you, were you connected with Nashville yet? And by the way, that, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. And I think I did. I think on my YouTube trip, I think I heard that one, and it, it's a great song. That one I wrote for my girlfriend's um, father, who was staying with us. We were living in a little shack, like 250-square-foot garage, me and my really? girlfriend. And her father got kicked out of his house when he was dying with cancer. Oh, my God. So he was sleeping in the next room, and that was my song. I was trying to make a song from her to him. Wow. And did, it, like, did he appreciate it? Did it work? Did he, never, it he never got to hear it. He passed away. Oh. But that's the song that catapulted everything, because they used it in a Sony PlayStation thing. Oh, really? In a violent um, uh, thing. It was in Germany. Really? Yeah, it was just totally contrast, but wow, strange. Well, you know, when we were talking with Charles, you know, I always like to connect all the shows. Yeah. And I asked Charles, uh, I loved um, Rule the World, one of his songs, fabulous. And I asked him what it's about. He wouldn't tell me. He said, I want my listener yeah. to cull whatever they can get out of it, and I don't want my interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So, like, that song, that, that's, I, now we know that's a deeply personal song. Yeah. And then in Europe, they, or not Europe, um, 
you know, someone playing a video game, I'd say, all right, this really inspires me to kill pretend people. I'll send you, know? you the link. It's kind of, it's bizarre. And then Indeed. one person made a fan video of a guy with a mask on and he's getting a gun put to his head. Really? Yeah, so it was like just really strange visual stuff on that, but so that's the song that charted over in Germany and then from there they booked me a tour and then I've been over there I think four times. Now you realize, you, you know who your famous company is for that, right? Mm -mm. The Hoff. Oh God, yes. But. But, but he's got a cool car, man. He does have a cool car. Yeah. No, but no, no. so so that's interesting. So you, I, I read this that um, your your top twenty five on Apple's playlist in Germany. Mm. So what do you think the connection is? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think it was just the, uh, I think it was the song. You know, I mean, sometimes you have a song that speaks to people, and you don't really know why. And you know, unlike this country. Um, in Europe, people actually speak more than one language. They do. So amazingly well. Right. So there. So it's not just a function of they like the the melody and the chord progression. Right. They're going to understand. They're going to hear the lyrics. And they're going to resonate. Right. right. It's really. A, oh, that's a. You know, I just heard a few bars right now. That, that's a really powerful song. Thank you. And by the way, what you, I noticed, you put yourself down on guitar. One of the things you did on there looked like it probably was kind of tough. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The trail, about. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see that. Because that did not look simple. Then you go, nobody knows. Nobody knows. No one knows. That's not the part I was thinking of. No? There was something where you did where you ha not you did a little bit of hammering. There was a three quick three notes in rapid succession. Oh. That's it. So when you're playing live, is that effortless at this point? Yeah, because it's just something that just comes. You know, right. it's like I'm there, and it's like an old friend. It's like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put it there. So when you're playing acoustic guitar like that, when there's such note economy, mm -hmm. I just came up with that. Yeah. But but there is. I economize on the notes. Yeah, but but every note is that important, and you can't. Uh, you know, we talked before, like you know, I'll come back to Charles' last episode. He, he uses no very few special effects, if any. This, even more so, you can't hide behind any kind of sound. No, I don't do that. Um, and every note matters. So as you're playing it live, do you worry that you're gonna get, I'm, I'm, I would call the other thing a trill also. Do you get worried or nervous? No, I mean, sometimes I get more worried vocally. Okay. Um, because this is always gonna be here. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? But if sometimes if you get up too early, like I did the Good Day New York show. With oh, did you really? Zana and Greg, I think his name is. And Scarborough, would, isn't that Scarborough? Yeah, Rosanna Scotto, I think. Rosanna Scotto and Chuck Scarborough. No, or is I he a different show? Greg Kelly, I think. Okay. But right. this was like last year, and it was early in the morning, man, and my voice was. Yeah, like, your voice isn't loosened up yet. No, and I was like really worried. So what was your? All right, so that's huge. So. In your little journey, and it's not a little journey, you, you know, let's start with Red Bank, you're a little coffee house. Yeah. Next thing you're flying to Nashville, now you're a big deal in Germany. How do you end up on that show? That's a, that's, I mean, that's the number one market in the country, the New York market. Yeah, it's weird. It's, uh, it was one of those Forrest Gump moments. It was right. like... You have a lot of those. Yeah, I was at dinner in New York. It's like a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. I was at dinner in New York, and uh, somebody was sitting next to us, and... They borrowed a chair, and uh, they were in PR, and uh, you know we got to talking. Okay. They gave me their card, and she said, you know, I just have a feeling about you. Like she started like looking really? at me. Really? Like it was weird, you know, it was like an intuition type thing. And what was so? Where was she placed in the world of PR? And Pretty media? big. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, uh, you know, that, that's strange. I just gave you a chair. It's fine, you know, and then. She, um, what, what connected her to your music, though? She asked me what I did. Right. You know, she said, you look, are you an actor or something like that? I said, no. Right. And I said, I'm a musician. She goes, So oh. did your head like kind of do this when she said, are you an actor? No, no, not at all. I mean, no. no. Yeah. I was just like. Uh, Where were you? Where, what part of the city were you in? Gramercy. Okay. All right. And it was like, uh, cool, you know, and then she gave me her card, and then I sent her some links, and 
just all right so it wasn't like at the restaurant just on vibe no but the, but the vibe was enough the vibe that, was there and then yeah or maybe she had too many drinks but it was just like one of them things and you know i sent her some stuff and she liked it and and then so said uh, how would you like to do this and i was like yeah uh yeah yeah right did you say it like that yeah. yeah. Right. So um, at that point, so how do they introduce you? In other words, what's your street It was a single. Cred? It was a single. Okay. And okay. They went off of, uh, I guess, streams or something on Spotify. Okay. So you had, you know, enough street cred. Yeah. Where it's not like they're saying, all right, Dave Cohen, you know, like suddenly, you're like, why would I even put me on? But you had enough street cred at that point. Well, if they put me on, why wouldn't they do you, Dave? Come on. All right. I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. They'll put anybody on because he's a lawyer. Up. But um, there's met plenty of lawyers on there. Actually, I was in the green room with a lawyer that was you? on before me. Who? Um, there's a guy from Freehold who does a lot of the news shows now. He's a no, prosecutor. I don't remember there. his name. Yeah. Judge Napolitano. Oh yeah, he was from Jersey. Yeah, he he's was on Jersey before judge. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually went to one of his seminars many years ago. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's good. Um, so. You, you play not the Today Show. What show was it? Good, uh, Good Day New York. Good Day New York. What, what network was that? I uh, five, so, I think. Five. Yeah, okay. Fox, I think. Right. So that that's that's huge. Yeah, it was cool. So you do that, and, and that's because you had a single, and and you had a lot of street cred. Yeah. Was that after you were already charting in Germany yes, and all that? Yes, that was last year. Okay. I think last year or the year before. Last year. All right. So you're getting. I mean, like right now, you've got so many different things going on. You, you know, like in Europe, like. I couldn't nail you on this show in Europe. Like another, like, oh, we're not going to do that show. I'm kidding. But like, your your top 25 is gigantic, and and Germany's kind of a big country. Yeah, but yeah. It, see, it's then it's like the UK, right? And then there's other countries that we did, that kind of like it's moving. So it dovetails, right? It's moving a little. So right. hopefully we can keep the momentum going. So what is? Listen to music, everybody. Yeah, Stream it. Yeah. And we're going to give you all sorts of promotion. Thank you. Uh, I no, really appreciate I, it. I appreciate you coming here. Um, so you go from Red Bank to Nashville. Um, you tour Europe. No, I go to California after that. Oh, we didn't cover that yet. Yeah. So this is a weird Forrest Gump moment. So my mom is a psychic. I knew that from Scott, but let's hear about it. Yeah, so she was with a client and the song Sugar Sugar came on. Okay. And Who did that song? The guy from the Archies, Ron Dante. That's right. right but right. he was Barry Manilow's producer for Mandy and Copacabana. Oh, okay. So my mom's doing a reading for this lady, and Sugar Sugar comes on, and the lady's like, yeah, that's, that's my cousin. And my mom's like, wow, that's your cousin. My son's a songwriter. So she listens to it, sends it out to him, and then he flies me out. Uh, and, and you know what the funny thing is, though? If you don't take it to heart, see, I could actually sabotage your career by making you happy and confident, and then you'll never... No, that'll anything. never happen. Right, I'll good, never good. be ha truly happy or truly confident. Good, good. There's no harm and no worry there at all. All right, all. good, good. Thank God. So the fact that you have these people listening to your music mm. and flying you out means your music's good, and it really is. It's either that or I'm thinking that maybe they're slow. Maybe they don't have enough, Take, anything going on. See, the, there, we started with this, right? You try to get funny when it gets a little... No, but I'm serious. Know. I thought maybe there's an oversight somewhere. It must be some kind of no, mistake. Your, your stuff's good. Your stuff's really good. Thank you. And, and, and you're doing something in a very different way from what I always said Bono does. You're, you're, I mean, your stuff's a little more... Actually, you're doing more on there than I think The Edge does. I mean, he has those nice layers and all that. Yeah, he does a lot of like... You're right, right, like, right. You know. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that one. You know it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah play it, yeah. yeah, we used to do that song. Here, let's see. Oh, oh, I want to oh, hear this. I will completely fuck it up I like it. I did. What did I, I did? I tried to do Surrender in one of our shows, and I completely fucked it up. All right. Yeah. Oh, I fucked up the timing there, right? do that but it's just two chords it's good man yeah but it's two chords imagine but, with effects ran through that oh my god that, it would that's sound what makes like them so special ethereal. yeah by the way let's switch i want to i want you to show us your martin while we're doing it oh 
Do you want to play this? No, you play it. You play it. You're the guest. Um, here, give me that. I'll, I'll hold this while you get. You like that guitar, don't you? Oh, I love it. it. Can I have it? It's for sale. Whoop. You warned me not to walk too far with my mic like this. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I'm not in love with it. No, that, that thing really, I mean, show us, but it really generates a lot of sound. It's definitely more organic, this guitar, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but that, that guitar plays easier. It does, but see, yeah. sometimes like... And this is a Martin. It is, it's a Martin. This is actually a cheaper one. Is it? It's a DM, but you can see it had a lot of wear on it. Um, this is our second Martin on the show. Maybe our third. We had a graphite Martin. Wow, show, that's cool. like a rain song. They have the rain song graphite one. Oh, th this is jet black. It was really cool. I forgot who brought it in. Uh, but And this has higher action. Yeah. Oh, you got a pick in there. Yeah, there's probably several picks oh, in there. I'm I can't very, get them out. Oh, I'm very good And there might that. be a mouse in there or something. Here you go. I got one of them. There we go. We got two of them. All right, and there's, okay, a, getting picks out. there's a dollop of hash. Oh, there, you there you That'd go. That'd be pretty cool. Um, is there? No. There's right. one of your picks. Oh, you got one. Look, that's a neon pick. And is this from your company? Yeah, you, that I was for the Clayton guitar. Oh, this company. is a thin one. Yeah. This is nice. This is more if you're doing really heavy rhythm. Not as good as Pick World, though. No, no. Um, the folks at Clayton, they're okay. But. So you got this in Red Bank, right? I did. Yep. And I was all prepared to buy a brand new one. Okay. So I go in there, and then I saw this on the, you know, hanging up. And I was like, man, that one kind of speaks to me for some reason. So I picked it up. Oh, it plays nice. Yeah, 500 bucks. Really? Yeah. That's shocking to me. Yeah. That's really shocking. The we always t talk about this. You got sealed machine heads on Yeah. I just sort of grabbed your guitar from you. Not so far. You've got a little bit of road wear over here going on, which is Dude, cool. Dude, this thing's been dropped. It's really? Been, yeah, look at this. It's got a crack. See this? Oh, wow. That, that, that's cool. But it's, you know. It's and then what, what does this star represent? All right, so that song I sang, Count the Stars. Um, oh, you got one there, too. It's kind of just two. Like, if we count them, there's only two. Well, yeah, you count them, but, yeah. they're, you know, you can actually envision more. It depends on your imagination. Good, I guess, yeah. If the hash came out, yeah. Yes. But, um, but I was staying in this little place, right? And I wanted to know if I was making the right move, you know, like moving out of where I was living. Right. And I remember when I shut the lights off at night, these stars were above my head oh that's pretty cool so they glowed so i took them off just to never forget that moment oh that's see that's that's a great moment so this guitar even this, this could have been a piece of crap guitar and that would have meaning but you yeah. put them on a nice guitar which is even better yeah i figured yeah. you know it's my guitar so yeah why not i mean who cares yeah right mm -hmm. that's very cool now that that's a great sounding guitar so um we've got you going again all over the country, you have you in California. So what happened in California? Oh, wow. So I go out to California, <clears throat> and I meet with Ron, and they put me in this, like, really expensive hotel with a rooftop pool and turkey sausage for breakfast. And That's what I had for breakfast. Too. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, wow, this is fancy. I'm used to, like, eating ramen. That's and interesting. So from the panhandle, you're finding turkey sausage to be, like, the bomb. Oh, we yeah. didn't have turkey in Florida. Okay. We, just, we ate dirt. So right. we, were, <laughs> we were out there. That's good. We were out there. <laughs> Who's got money for food? Right. Dirt's perfectly fine. Rock yeah. soup is good, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's stone yeah. soup. So <clears throat> we're out there, and I'm, they're taking pictures. And I'm saying to myself, when's the recording going to start? You know? Right. And uh, <clears throat> they're like, you know, oh, like yeah. Michael Jackson has a spare bedroom for you. No, it wasn't like that. But we okay. did go to Ted Perlman's house. And Why do I know that name? He was Bob Dylan's guitar player on okay. the road. Okay. And he's a producer. Oh, wow. So they're like, well, I'm going to pair you with him. And I'm like, cool. And when I was a kid, I used to be, like, really into Barry Manilow for some reason. He was wonderful. Yeah. I, and I used to look at the album, and I saw Ron Dante. And I'd be like, wow, I like his arrangements. And then here I am working with them. Wow. But the songs didn't come out like I thought they would. No. So I ended up financing my own songs and then really? they became better. Yeah. So did anything come out of California? Yeah. I mean, I, I had like three songs and then he called me to use one of them okay. for another band he was working with. And I was so, like, cool. So do you, do you sing and perform everything you write or have you licensed your music to other folks? No, I haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, I've had the opportunity to do that with some bands in Europe, but I don't know. 
I don't want to say I'm picky, but I am. Right, right. You know, you think of Stallone, right? He could have uh, let someone else star in Rocky and look what happened because he yeah, kept it. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, if the right band comes along or the right artist, I would definitely do that. Right. And do you work with the same studio musicians all the time? No. Or, so you're, you're you, and then you're going to go here and there, and, and they're going to feed you musicians. Yeah, or I pick them. Like, like I'll do a research on them and listen to them and see what they've done. Okay. And then kind of see if they can capture the vibe. Do they give you enough latitude? Yeah. Oh, really? Totally. Oh, that's really good. I worked with John Levine, who did the fight song for Rachel Platten. And These are both names I don't know. Who's Rachel Platten? Uh, Rachel Platten did Fight Song. This is my fight song. Take back my last song. You ever hear that song? If it was written after 1980, I don't know it. Oh, okay. oh shit. All right. Um, it's a good song. Okay. He, he, he just did uh, stuff for Avril Lavigne. I've heard of her. No, yeah. I, I know she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I did a couple songs. Actually, the new single that's coming out was produced by him, but um, he did a lot of the instrumentation himself. Wow. Just me and him. That's really? it. Just two people now, in a room. Do you have the so you play piano, we know that. Yeah. Can you hit a drum kit and at least get by? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Can I you can. get by or can you do a little more? Like can you like I can hold it. Oh really? Yeah, I okay. mean I'm not super fancy. You're not doing but, a double kick and all that. No, but what I do doesn't really require that. Right, right. You're you're looking for your basic backup yeah. rhythm. Mm -hmm. Will you pick up a bass and do yeah. that in one of your yeah, tracks? Yeah, totally. Okay, yeah. right, because for the, your style, and I don't mean it in anything but a positive way, you're not looking for slap bass and things no, like that. No, no, I mean, if that is ever needed, I could always hire somebody to do it right. Right, right, you and know? you could even just do a fresh track if you're not happy with what you did. Totally, or I could okay. do something on the keyboard that sounds cool. Now, do you have other folks do your, um, your harmonies, or do you do harmonize on top of yourself? I usually do it. Okay, Yeah. all right. It's funny, I remember in college we had a... Um, we had the Fostex four track. Yeah. Yeah, before your time. That's cool. I've heard uh, of that. Little cassette, and you'd have to like do. Dude, I heard of that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Actually, those are coming back. Are they really? People are using them. Because mm -hmm. they like the analog sound. No, the analog sounds good. It's That's warm. Why, yeah, then same reason why people like tube amps. Like, if you listen to like some of the Jim Croce stuff, the warmth on that is just a blanket. Well, right, yeah, that's you know, a good way. It's yeah. a blanket, man. Well, you know, I saw online the other day, you could buy a reel to reel. Like, and they're not that much, 2,000 bucks. I'd love to do that. Yeah, like a nice With a TA. good mic. Yeah, like a nice Shure. Yeah. An Omni or a Uni. Neumann or. Yeah. Just now, I remember I was a uh, freshman year, I, I was at Delaware, a uh, place that makes your picks. And we played a gig at Maybe a, you went to school with one of these guys. Maybe. I, they're probably way older than you are. I mean, this is like, yeah, that's a big company, I think. I, I don't know. Well, I'll be world. 40 soon. But um, right on. No, but we had an omni. We had one omnidirectional at a live gig, and it, the sound quality was astounding. At a live gig. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it came out really good. But uh, it's amazing. It, no, I think old school. Like overhead. Eh, just like in front. No, That's it. Wow. Nothing. Yeah, it came out really good. But um, I think a lot of the old stuff. We, we had we had a, a Mesa Boogie on last week with a nice ten pound magnet on the Love back. Love it. They Love don't it. make magnets like that. No, anymore. man. No. Those are like. A thing of the past, but yeah. they definitely have a warmth to them mm -hmm. that is very hard to replicate. Yeah. You know? They do. So I want to talk about how people can find you. Um, I think your music's fantastic. Thanks, man. Uh, Thank you for having me on. Seriously, uh, man. It, it, this has been fantastic. Uh, all right, so what's the main place, the main hub where we're going to so find you? So it would be brianmackeymusic.com. Right, and I found it's so easy. Yeah, it's just. Now, now Mackie, M A C K E Y. Yes. Because uh, I. I Look, there is a, I think there's a sports figure or someone with the same name, but that's it. There were only, you know, because that could be a there's common a, name. There's a journalist and okay, there's, that's a, right. there's a golfer. Right, and that's all I found. So it wasn't hard. Yeah. Um, and I think you were hitting higher than they were when I did the search. Well, I mean, they're good, but they're, they're not, not as they're fucked not Brian up. Mackey. They're not as fucked up as I am. I was going to say they're not Brian Mackey, but yeah. they are Brian Mackey. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> it's weird when you see somebody else with your name. Oh, you're like, gee, Dave Cohen. I think you think. Yeah, maybe. Right? There's I, a couple. I got a call from the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office 20 years ago. Get out of here. We have a guy in jail who says he's Dave Cohen. What? Yeah, and he ended up in jail because he was impersonating me. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. He yeah. said he was a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's ballsy. Yeah, Dave. That's John Smith. But. Um, so we, all right, so we're going to go Brian Mackey. Doc, is it BrianMackey.com? Uh, BrianMackeyMusic.com. BrianMackeyMusic.com. 
really important, um, your picks, what's the name of it again? Because I have a mental block. Uh, they're from Pick World. Pick World. So Pick World. So if anybody go. wants to score some cool picks, hit up Pick, Pick World. Pick, Pick World. We're going to get a Delaware nice tight shot of that. There we, oh, look at that. I'm watching the monitor, which Mary tells me not to do. Um, yes. So we got the monitor. Yeah, look at my hand shaking. That's the problem. There we go. Try to get that focused. Come on. Get it focused. You're screwing up, Jamie. Um, so, all right. So we got Pick World. Now, really importantly, do we know what date in August your uh, single's coming out? Yeah, it's the 23rd. So August 23rd, your single's coming. What's the name of it again? Promise Me. Promise Me. Okay. It's definitely a different kind of song. I've never made a song like this before. So we'll, we'll give us a little it's preview. It's definitely more upbeat. Are you good giving us a little preview? Well, it's it's electronic song. All right, so we won't do yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So, and then how will people find it? Just go to your website, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah, there's not a stitch of guitar on this song. Right? Really? There's electric, but no, like. Van Halen. Um, jump. Right? Yeah, but they, they walked away from guitar on that song. It was all keyboard. I know. So you could do it. You got you got uh, good predecessors there. Wow. Look out, Edward. Edward. Oh, Eddie Van Halen. Oh my God, that was bad of me. Right. But yeah, but seriously, like he walked away from guitar. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He was good though. He came he up with a really nice good. lick there. And and you actually are a piano player, which we learned tonight. Pretty, all right. Pretty good, I guess. All right. Good. the stars in my room above my bed the hours and I I don't want to let you go I don't like myself when I'm alone All the stars are out tonight All the stars are ours If we get lost somewhere in life The stars will take us home your head down on me above our head is a galaxy and I don't want you to go home, home. I don't like it here on Stars will take us home. Is anyone out there know the pain of losing yourself? Yeah. It's hard to get back. You don't know how to act at. Feeling lost like never before Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. So, 
We have just completed episode seven on uh, Guitar Tales. I am thrilled, we're all thrilled to have you here. Riverview Studios has been the most wonderful supporter of the show. What we're going to ask you to do is when you watch our show, we've made a choice, uh, we're streaming every show we have on YouTube. Please hit the subscriber button. It, it, it accomplishes a few things. First of all, it gives you notice every time a fresh episode comes out. And you heard from my little list before, we have five shows lined up already. And by the time these five shows, look at that crappy handwriting. Uh, but it, by the time these are, are taped, there's going to be five or 10 more. We have so many wonderful musicians who are coming on the show. So to help us keep getting this show to you, if you hit the subscribe button, it helps you find out when the show is going to be shown, but it's also going to help us make sure that the show keeps coming out and we get great musicians um, like Brian Mackey out to chat with you um, and you can hear their stories. Uh, so we're thrilled to have you. Um, thanks again to Scott Guitar Assist Angle because on my list, which I will show one more time, almost everyone here comes from Scott. He has been tireless, full of energy, and full of enthusiasm in promoting all of our shows, and we, we really do appreciate it. I, he's our publicist, he's a wonderful musician, the Smoking Jackets are a fabulous band, and all of that is bringing us together as a family here in Guitar Tales. So we can't wait to see you next time, and thank you again for tuning in. This is Dave Cohen tuning out, and have a great week. Take care.